Good evening. My name is Pastor Christine Kirchner, and I am the pastor here at Mountain Grove Lutheran Parish in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, as well as the interim pastor at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Berwick, Pennsylvania. Welcome to our midweek Latin worship video. I invite you to prepare for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who gathers us in the wilderness to redeem us, anoint us, and make us new. Amen. A reading from 1 Samuel, beginning in the 16th chapter. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul, seeing I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil, and go. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord, and invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me him whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came out to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but behold, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. The Word of the Lord. Our lesson for tonight is the Old Testament reading from this past Sunday. And it tells the story of the anointing of King David. And as I read this story, I was struck how this is a wonderful example of even though we live in a messy and imperfect world, filled with messy and imperfect people, God is still at work in the mess. And God is using imperfect people for that work. So if you look at Samuel. And if you back up just a few verses into chapter 15, you see Samuel is experiencing a whole range of emotions right now. So Samuel is furious at Saul. Saul is the first king of Israel, actually anointed by Samuel, and he is supposed to lead the Israelites to be a great nation under God. But fast forward a few chapters and Saul is now more interested in serving himself rather than serving God. And Samuel is rightly mad at him. He is furious and there is a massive confrontation between the two of them. Which now then brings us to chapter 16 where instead of anger, Samuel is now Grieved. He is mourning the future that he had seen with Saul. He had envisioned this wonderful future with Saul as king, and he now knows that that isn't going to happen. 
And then that grief quickly turns into fear as God tells Samuel to go and anoint a new king. Because even though Saul may no longer be the chosen king of Israel, he is still the technical king of Israel. And Samuel doesn't want to anoint a new king and risk being killed. And so in just a few short verses, we have Samuel going through a wide range of emotions. And I believe, or I think, that we can all relate right now to feeling a wide range of emotions in pretty quick succession. There is anger at the world and anger at others who aren't doing how, or aren't behaving how we think they should behave. There is grief and disappointment over a future that now is not happening, as there are events that have to be drastically changed or canceled. And there is fear. Fear for the unknown, fear for the future, fear for our own health and the health of all those that we love. Like Samuel, I have a feeling we are experiencing a whole bunch of emotions right now. But the amazing thing is as you look at our reading, God's, it's God's response to Samuel. So God does not condemn Samuel or chastise him for feeling these emotions. God doesn't say you shouldn't be feeling this or if you just had a little bit more faith, then you wouldn't be feeling this. Instead, God lets Samuel feel all of these emotions while still being a servant of the Lord. And God lets Samuel feel all these emotions and doesn't let him off the hook for being a servant of the Lord. We might be feeling a whole bunch of emotions right now, and that's okay. And it doesn't stop us from being children of God. But it also doesn't get us off the hook for being children of God either. We are still called to live our lives as God's children. We are still called to share that love of God with all those around us, to serve God and our neighbor. Now, how we do that might be drastically different during this time. But it doesn't excuse us from finding new ways to do it. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a pretty intimidating thought. That God is going to use me regardless of how I am feeling or what I am going through. I am still a called servant. And that's intimidating because I know I don't get it right all the time. In fact, I rarely get it right. I am a messy and imperfect person. Which brings us to King David. Because even though King David has been chosen by God, and even though the Spirit of the Lord rests upon him, King David doesn't get it right either. In fact, King David makes some pretty big mistakes throughout his life. And yet, if you look at our lesson, it says the Spirit of the Lord rested upon him from that day forward. Even with the mistakes, God never abandoned him. Even with the mistakes, he never stopped being a servant of the Lord. Now that is an incredibly freeing thought. Because that means that we can go out and boldly live as God's children, serving all those around us the best that we know how. And if we get it wrong, because we will get it wrong, it also gives us the grace to not give up, to keep trying, to continue being God's children day after day. 
Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue with the prayer. Let us pray. Faithful God, shower the world with your loving kindness, that all may know your peace. Open our eyes to the needs of our neighbors, that all may know your love. Comfort the sick and dying, that all may know your mercy. Guide our leaders in the way of truth, that all may know your justice. Focus our hearts on the way of the cross, that all may have faith in you. Keep turning us again to you, that all may know new life in you. Amen. Hear us, O God, and keep teaching us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining me this evening. I will be back 9 a.m. on Sunday morning with another worship video. Uh, if you have any prayer requests that you would like included in that video, please either comment in this pay on this video or on the Facebook post that we have asking for prayer requests. Uh, that will be a weekly thing that I'm going to try and do, so be sure to keep an eye out on those posts. And if you don't feel comfortable commenting, you can always private message me. Have a good evening.